What if you could replace an hour-long, weather-dependent ferry ride with a 10-minute drive? What if you could take a journey that currently takes five hours and cut it in half down to just two and a half? That's impossible. It sounds like a fantasy, but right now, under the Baltic Sea, the largest construction site in all of Europe is doing exactly that. They are building the world's longest underwater road and rail tunnel. But how do you even begin to build an 18 kilometer long tunnel underwater? How do you dig a trench with pinpoint precision, build 89 massive tunnel sections and sink them into place? This is the story of the Feman Belt Tunnel, the mega project that is about to change travel in Europe forever. The 60 minute problem and the 10 minute solution. For decades, the European Union has operated as one single market, allowing the free movement of people and goods. But there's a problem. That free movement often hits a wall, or in this case, a body of water. All across the continent, you'll find transportation bottlenecks. In Germany, freight trains get delayed waiting for passenger trains. In other areas, single-track rail lines mean traffic has to literally stop and wait for an oncoming train to clear. And one of the biggest bottlenecks? It's right here, on the ScanMed corridor that connects Scandinavia with Central Europe. Right now, to get from the German island of Fehmarn to the Danish island of Lolland, you have one choice, a car ferry. That journey across the Fehmarn belt takes about an hour, not including waiting time. This project changes everything. The Fehmarn Belt Tunnel will be an 18-kilometer immersed tunnel for both cars and electric trains. When it opens in 2029, that one-hour ferry ride will become a seven-minute train journey or a 10-minute drive. It's not just a convenience, it's a total transformation, moving freight from noisy roads to clean electric rail. A factory for a mega tunnel. So how do you pull off an engineering feat this massive? The secret isn't digging a tunnel under the sea. The secret is building it on land and sinking it. To do that, they first had to build the largest tunnel factory in the world. This isn't just a building, it's a massive, self-contained industrial park. It has six production lines and its own custom-built harbor, the third biggest in Denmark, created just for this project. But before the factory could build the tunnel, they had to build the entrances. This part is built in situ, which is Latin for in the traditional way. On both the German and Danish coasts, they first built a temporary dike to hold back the sea. This gave them a dry area to dig a massive hole, build the first few hundred meters of the tunnel entrance and cover it up. Once that first piece was secure, they removed the temporary dike, letting the water back in. Now, you have a tunnel entrance sticking out into the water, acting as a perfect connection point for the next phase. Manufacturing a concrete giant. This is where the real magic happens. The tunnel will be made of 89 gigantic pre-built elements. And when I say gigantic, I mean it. Each element is 217 meters long, 42 meters wide, and nine meters tall. Each one weighs more than 13,000 elephants. You can't build something that big all at once. So they use an assembly line. Step one, it starts with a massive steel reinforcement cage. Workers assemble the base, then the walls, and finally, the top slab. Step two, this entire 217 meter long cage is pushed forward into the casting area. Step three, they don't cast the whole thing in one go. Instead, they build it in nine separate segments, each about 25 meters long. Step four, 
The casting for just one segment is a continuous 30 hour plus pour. This is all done inside the factory halls to maintain perfectly controlled conditions. No wind, no rain, no temperature swings. Once all nine segments are cast, the full element is pushed outside into a basin. But it's not ready. To make it float, they seal both ends with giant steel walls called bulkheads. Now you have 89 of these hollow concrete giants, but how do you move them? Marcus gave us a great analogy. It's like trying to lift a stack of nine books by only touching the first and last one. They would just collapse. The solution? You press them together hard. Once they are compressed, you can lift the whole stack. They do the same with the tunnel segments to prepare them for transport. Sinking with pinpoint precision. With the elements ready, the final phase begins. First, they have to dig the 18-kilometer trench. This is done by massive excavation ships. But how do they dig with such accuracy, deep underwater? They use a network of survey points on both shores, combined with satellite and GPS so the operator knows exactly where the excavator is at all times. And sediment? Marcus says it's not a big problem. The currents are manageable and the soil is stiff. Before they place an element, they just run a trench cleaner, basically a giant underwater vacuum, to do a bit of housekeeping. Now, the main event. One, the basin holding the 13,000 elephant-sized tunnel element is flooded with water and the element floats. Two, it's moved into the work harbor where immersion pontoons are attached to each end. Three, tugboats carefully tow this entire assembly out to its precise location in the Ferman belt. Four, then using steel wires, the pontoons slowly and steadily lower the colossal element into the trench, which sits up to 40 meters below sea level. It's not a snug fit. So a special ship called a spreader pontoon comes in and fills the gaps on the side with sand. Finally, a protection layer pontoon places a layer of rock on top, shielding the tunnel from things like dropped ship anchors. This process will be repeated 89 times, taking an estimated three years just to position all the elements. More than a tunnel, a new artery for Europe. This entire operation is a masterpiece of logistics with a massive fleet of support ships and incredibly strict safety procedures. Everything is simulated, everything is tested, and every piece of equipment has a redundant backup. But when it's finished, the Feman Belt Tunnel will be more than just a record-breaking piece of engineering. It will close one of the biggest bottlenecks in the European rail system. The train journey from Hamburg to Copenhagen will be cut from five hours to just two. This tunnel isn't just connecting two islands. It's connecting two countries, two cultures, and creating a new artery for an entire continent. So what do you think? Does Europe really need such a massive tunnel? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.